everybody. We got a great one today, you know, for a change. And this time, this time I mean it because I have two of my favorite guests, Molly Jong Fast, whose podcast Fast Politics is fun and entertaining, and the fun and entertaining Mark Leibovich of the Atlantic Monthly on the Republican debate in Milwaukee and on Tucker Carlson's interview uh, with former President Trump on, on Twitter or X, I, I, I guess. First, I must admit, I'm a little freaked out by Trump's mugshot. So sinister. You know he practiced it. A, a friend said in front of a mirror, but I think he practiced it staring at a picture of Melania. Uh, that's not fair. No one knows what's going on inside someone's someone's marriage. But the jury will see that, and I know he's he's sending off, I'm angry at this completely bogus indictment, but I think it reads... Holy shit, this guy is a psychopath. Anyway, uh, Mark uh, Leibovich was actually in Milwaukee for the Republican debate, which adds a little color, and he was in the spin room where surrogates for the campaign spin reporters on uh, how their, their candidate did. Molly watched the debate on color TV, as I did, so you'll get our reactions to the debate and more my reaction to the uh, Trump-Tucker interview, which I watched uh, in its entirety, and I would recommend you're watching it unless you're worried about getting depressed or freaked out, um, if you weren't already depressed or freaked out by the debate. But the Carlson interview uh, with Trump is insane. There's a section I play where Trump insists that he had to fire FBI Director James Comey because Comey was involved in a plot to replace Trump, the president, with Hillary Clinton. I'm not kidding. You remember Trump was, was president at this point, and somehow Comey, the sitting FBI director, was supposedly involved in a plot to replace Trump with the losing candidate from the presidential debate. That, that feels like a degree of difficulty that would make January 6th child play. And, and of course... Uh, that wasn't the rationale presented for firing Comey at the time. But none none of this is explained. Nothing is explained, really, in this whole interview. Now, believe me, I am no fan of Comey's. That's an understatement. But Jesus Christ, the, the whole interview is that insane and includes Trump's assessment that not only is President Biden physically frail, but also senile. And Tucker weighs in that he thinks Kamala Harris is senile and doesn't explain that. I, I wish I was making this shit up. The winner of the uh, debate, Ramaswamy, I guess, but really Trump, I think. But uh, we have a long way to go, and the Georgia trial may start early now. Uh, I'm recording this on Friday, so that may no longer be the case. One of uh, the defendants in the RICO case, George Cheeseboro, has asked for the earliest trial possible. And in Georgia law, the prosecution uh, has the obligation to provide that. And the current court docket is filled, I guess, until October 23rd, which is when this may start. Now, maybe Cheeseboro would be the only defendant. I don't know, uh, but we'll learn this all soon enough. But I kind of hope that the January 6th trial would go first because uh, there's one defendant, Trump, and it seems that it could get resolved fast enough to be done before the Republican primaries are over and their nominating convention convenes. So they could make adjustments uh, should Trump be convicted and even imprisoned uh, waiting appeal. Now, just to remind you, there's nothing in the Constitution that says a convicted felon serving time in prison cannot run for president. But it's not easy. That's, that's why the Unabomber never ran. Uh, but apparently it's, it's uh, legal. Of course, Trump might be released under certain conditions uh, to the campaign trail, uh, such as uh, wearing an ankle bracelet and not campaigning in any country that doesn't have an extradition treaty with the U.S., like the United Arab Emirates, where he claims he's planning to build another Trump tower. 
Anyway, uh, this is all conjecture, and there's just months and months and months of this crap uh, to go. And here's this week's uh, podcast with Mark Leibovich and Molly Jong Fast. A great one, you know, for a change. Since, Mark, you are at the debate in Milwaukee, Mm -hmm. uh, let's go to you uh, first, because you had the visual and the audio. You were there. You were in the room. You went to the the spin room afterwards. Yeah, I did. I met a Dutch journalist. (laughs) (laughs) That's exciting. I met a Dutch journalist. Yeah. (laughs) He had some thoughts on this. What were his yeah. thoughts? I, that, that's what's important, not he you thought, and Molly. <laughs> <laughs> he thought Bob Dole is too old. No. Um, okay, this is Mark sorry, referring sorry, sorry. to it, a, a joke bit. I did, uh, I don't know, 30 <laughs> years ago, <laughs> where I was yeah. I was in New Hampshire and a Dutch, yeah. a Dutch journalist. <laughs> this was yeah. uh, in the, what, 96? <laughs> Yeah, uh, cycle, yep. and he Joel said, Clinton. "He said, who of the to me, who of the Republicans <laughs> you like the best?" This is during the primary part, and I said, mm-hmm. "Well, I like Dole." He said, "Oh, but he is so old." <laughs> and I said, "Well, he wasn't too old to save your sorry Dutch ass." <laughs> How long did it take the Nazis to roll over Holland? Was that like an hour? <laughs> so that's that's a blast from the uh, yeah, White House slow. correspondence. That's, so slow, I, that's why I had to set you up. <laughs> I thought it was funny, but well, you're, you're uh, it is funny, and you're also yeah. a good laugh. That's what I like. Yeah. But 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 laugh. okay. So let's go beyond that right away yeah. and uh, move on. So th- explain what a spin room is. Yeah, well, let me actually let me sort of back up and, and tell you what it's like for a reporter to cover a debate. Now, when you hear mm-hmm. cover a debate, you kind of conjure, you know, journalists actually on the ground, sort of seeing things that no one else can see. Right. You That's know what right. it is? It's a media center where there's like a lineup of like, you know, maybe 50 t- rows of tables were, you know, probably about 500 or so, maybe more media people watch TV of the debate because everyone's actually in a separate building um, right. you know, down the block in Milwaukee. So it's not like we are availed of like, uh, I mean, I guess we get a, maybe a separate feed. So maybe we kind of see a little bit of body language during the commercials, but not really because uh, it kind of cuts away to the crowd and stuff. You know, so I saw pretty much what everyone else saw uh, on TV. And then afterwards, you go into the spin room, which is one of these just absolute Hades uh, <laughs> of, of <laughs> humanity, you know, like every kind of hack gathered to try to like swarm around Vivek. And it was, you know, it was, and you try to pick up little things here and there, but you know, so it was kind of a mob. Can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. Is that okay, Al? It's your podcast. Oh, I I encourage uh, the other guests (laughs) to fill in for me. Go ahead. (laughs) Um, Did you see Don Jr. not get in? And can Um, you talk about that? No, but my colleague Denise Wills did. Apparently, yeah, Don Jr. was, um, I I guess Fox followed through on their threat to not let the uh, Trump (laughs) surrogates in. Um, I guess Matt Gates was supposedly trying to get in and Carrie Lake. And and I actually was kind of looking forward to seeing Carrie Lake in person because I'd only seen her uh, on, you know, in that filtered screen that she's kind of made. (laughs) Um, But no, Denise said that it was the um, cone of beauty. The cone of beauty. (laughs) Uh, Um, But I did not see that myself, but Denise did. And uh, yeah, she can confirm that that Don Jr. and at least Kimberly were in Milwaukee. Um, I'm not sure if the others ever um, made a point of dropping in. Okay. Well, that's a little color. Yeah, uh, 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 <laughs> yeah. F- f- from the event itself. There are some other things I saw on Twitter too. But let, let's <laughs> let's get your uh, take. Who won the debate? Who won the debate, you guys? Uh, okay, so in my mind, the sane candidate, which means we'll never hear from her again, was Nikki Haley, and then the crazy charlatan, which means he'll probably have a show on Fox, was Vivek. Yeah, I I actually thought you know Nikki Haley who. Um, you know, I, I didn't expect much from um, no, she didn't get a lot of pre you know advanced billing or anything, but I thought she was she was OK. She I seemed mean, like a normal like a sort of a normal politician uh, yeah. with some chops. Yeah. And uh, yeah. and of course, can't 
get the nomination because of all kinds of reasons. And one is part of her chops was why it's insane <laughs> to expect a <laughs> national ban on abortion. Yeah. Uh, Explaining hey, to them hey, how the federal government I, works. I have a I have a beef here. Uh, Molly. Uh, yes. You're a woman. <laughs> um, <laughs> women can't get abortions. Up until the moment of birth, can they, and, and including the moment of birth, we're, we're and and they all jumped on that. I mean, a few refused to actually say it, but no right. one said, "No, that's not true." So, I mean, are we looking for Republican primary candidates to tell the truth? Because that seems like a bridge too far. Look, okay, I was okay. watching. I I was watching it with my 15 year old uh, who is a Republican, a never Trump Republican. And he was saying, you know, that's true. And I said, nobody is having like I said, and I think this is really a failure of Democratic messaging. Mm -hmm. Nobody is having an abort. You know, the people who are trying to get abortions at 17 weeks are people where the fetus is dead or they're imminently both going to die. Or I mean, nobody is like, oh, I guess I'll just do it now. I, You know, I had all these opportunities to do it when it wouldn't be painful and horrific and totally traumatizing. But no, no, let's just do it now when it's thousands of dollars more and the, the this whole, is called late term abortions right. and it happens and for reasons and it's it because the babe the, right. is not viable and you can learn that later uh, than three months. I'm, you can learn right. that later. And also that it, by not doing it, you can jeopardize the woman's ability to have a child ever again, which is very pro-life. Right. I mean, I'll just say f from my own experience, you know, I got pregnant when I was 23 and it was an accidental pregnancy, but the greatest thing that ever happened to me. But, you know, we did this test and all of a sudden it seemed like he might have this terrible disease that was going to um, give him seizures and then he was going to die when he was about, you know, 18 months. And so if he had that disease, I was going to have an abortion and it would have been a second trimester abortion. By the way, to get a second trimester abortion, and this was 20 years ago when Roe was still a thing, it was not easy. I mean, you know, they said, well, you're going to have to go, you know, and it turned out he was fine. But I'm just saying, like, when you do things like that, it is because you are so desperate. But what they suggest is that uh, it, women li literally deliver a baby and they go, nah, <laughs> <laughs> don't like don't, don't like the nose, mm -hmm. but of course, do you expect them to tell the truth? Uh, well, no, I guess not. But there's lies, and then there's these continual lies yeah. that. Uh, okay, well, Mark uh, Molly gave her winners. Do you agree? Yeah, I, I thought Haley did well. Um, you know, I thought you know Trump did well in absentia in that you know, right. barely talked about him. I mean, there was that section where Bell, yeah, what was that? Why why wasn't Christie uh, well, doing he, his he, thing? He, I think Christie was okay. I, I think here here's the thing. I mean, for as good as Christie can be in these settings, it's hard. I mean, this is actually one thing I think we did get in the debate hall because we had there were mics. The, the mics of the crowd were much kind of easier to pick up from where we were because there was a lot more audio. It is really chilling to try to make a point when the, you know, at least 90% of the crowd is against you. And you could see, mm -hmm. I mean, it was, for one, you're being drowned out. I mean, as a practical matter, I mean, yes, you can sort of stand firm against the mob. But when, you know, when you're being drowned out, it's it's quite difficult to be heard, right? Literally. Yeah. And also, you know, Christy, he became, I think, as the, the night went on um, a bit, you know, almost gun shy because he kind of he had this look of someone who was waiting for a chandelier to fall on his head because every time he was going to go after Trump, he knew that like a, a big you know wall of sound. <laughs> in the crowd. So, uh, you know, I think that was a bit neutering. Um, you know, I thought I thought Vivek was a huge uh, loser. I mean, just because everyone seemed to hate him, which, of course, you know, in the upside down world means he'll he'll be beloved by the base. And, you know, yeah. what the hell do I know? Right. Um, although I do think that you did get a sense that everyone on the stage just wanted to just jump across the stage and um, and strangle the guy. Um, yes. Which I, I think, <laughs> you know, was not an uncommon view among voters, although, again, I could be dead wrong about that. Well, among that the crowd, they seem to go for it. Right. 
Yeah. Uh, and uh, writers uh, the, 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 the today have been saying he was a big winner. You know, he, he has said a number of amazing things, and one of which is that he's a scientist. Is he? <laughs> well, he's not. He's, he's an investment bio- banker yeah. Yeah. Uh, who right. invested. He didn't invent any drugs, but, you know, but he, he uh, he's a little loose with the truth. Yeah. Let's put yeah. it that way. But, yeah. you know, who and is Everyone it? was. I mean, you know, remember, like. I remember, um, remember when, again, it sounds, I'm going to, I'm dating myself and dating many people, but, uh, remember, you know, Gerald Ford got in such trouble. <laughs> yeah, you really in, are. Uh, 19, <laughs> no, but in 1976, he said, I remember you know, this. Well, Ru- Russia will never uh, occupy Eastern Europe, which was, you know, it doesn't control Poland. Doesn't control <laughs> Poland, which was in Eastern Europe, it was on the Soviet bloc. And it was just, it was a clumsy thing. I mean, he, he presumably knew. That he was kind of misspeaking. I mean, the way that Tim Scott last night said, what did he say? He said, he, he said something like, absolutely. He, he meant to say absolutely not, but he said absolutely. Well, Scott wants to fire the right. 8,500 new IRS agents. Yeah. So that um, his donors don't have to pay taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone understand that, what, what? That's personal service. All that's if about. Nothing else. The, 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 it's the, hilarious. Yeah, they want to kill the federal government because they hate it, but it's the only place that would employ such numbstuckles as these Republicans. Well, on I, the stage. you know, uh, Scott doesn't believe the government creates jobs. Mm-hmm. I've had right. this conversation with him on the floor of the Senate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, what about, you know, the Erie Canal and the interstate highway system and the space program? And he said the private sector would have done those better. As we're seeing with Elon Musk, it's just great to elevate billionaires and, you know, use government money. That's a can't miss. I think Elon is using some technology developed by the Defense Department and oh, by yes. the space program. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Al, what is uh, what is uh, Tim Scott like? Oh, he's a, a nice guy if you talk to him, but he really is an ideologue. I mean, he really does believe this. He does believe yeah. that government doesn't create jobs. And no, I mean, he's um, what you see is kind of what you get. He's um, came up to me when Prince died. And, really? You know, yeah. And said, you know, really he's a Prince, Prince fan. Yeah, he's a big Prince fan. Well, you know, Minnesota. I mean, you that's know, why. Just, yeah, that was a connection. And uh, yeah. that's right. why he came up to me. So he's a nice guy in that way. But I, you know, I think he had a he didn't, you know, break through last night, of course. And no. Th- when, when do you see polls? When do you see it? But don't you think the Sandus was kind of flat? And uh, surprise, surprise. I just, I mean, DeSantis', DeSantis is horrificness in the debate yes. should not be understated. I, I just thought he was so bad. Was he bad because he was flat? Was he bad? Oh, he's just bad. I mean, I think terrible he's retail politician. Or, or even like prepared speech politician. He kind of froze. He's, you know, kind of herky jerky. You know, he's short. It, it just, he just, just isn't. Hey. He's a case against Ozempic. I mean, he's a case against, you know, he's thin. So now he looks 10 times worse. Again, I, you know, don't get me started on Ozempic. Like not everybody needs to be thin. We can all just be normal. I mean, I think he's like he he has like an eating thing. I think he's on a, I mean, I don't know. I've, I've read Not a and again, a speculation that he ha- that he's lost quite a bit of weight. You heard it first here that yes. Molly has read <laughs> right. that there right. is speculation. So maybe, maybe right. let's just, that the even if he's not on Ozempic. is on Ozempic. He, I'm pretty sure he's on Ozempic, but even That's if he's not on Ozempic. That's the kind of breaking news you get here <laughs> on the Al Franken he's not podcast. On Ozempic, he's lost a lot of weight and it has made him even more himself in a way that is just completely unappealing. Ugh. Well, yeah, I didn't self is not a good thing for him. I don't think yeah. not, not a good retail politician and it turns out not a good, uh, a great debater. By the way, he, when he said he got uh, rid of critical race theory in Florida, he didn't cause they didn't teach critical race theory. <laughs> in, right. In a, yeah. a school. But Al, watch someone try to teach critical race. <laughs> See how far they get in Ron DeSantis. Oh, no, in Ron DeSantis' Florida, you can get sued by a parent if you make a kid, if your teacher makes a kid feel uncomfortable about their race, that the, you can sue them, which makes it hard to teach history 
uh-huh. in Florida. Right. <laughs> and perhaps, unsurprisingly, Florida has a problem recruiting teachers. Yes, they have a big uh, uh, shortage. And also, they're the, uh, one of the lowest paid teachers. Also, he brought up, again, uh, COVID. And yeah. I do think that we did keep some kids out of school. In, or, you know, we didn't make school safe. Uh, quickly enough and spend enough money doing that. And I think it's had a bad effect on kids. But if you look at the re- red states had the highest COVID deaths of uh, all the states. And continue to. But I mean, with COVID, and again, I don't mean to in- try to inject sanity into what is clearly not the place for it. But I- it just seems to me like, you know, you have what was at least, I hope, a once in a lifetime pandemic and your Monday morning quarterbacking, you know, like nobody knew anything. They did the best they could. You know, we wouldn't have closed playgrounds had we known that it wasn't spread outside. I mean, Nobody knew anything. The other thing is voters, I mean, no one cares about this anymore. I mean, there's like, when you look at issues that, that voters most care about, COVID never even cracks the top 10 anymore. People do retroactively say that people, I guess, kind of did their best, but we're just moving on. There is one little fact, which is that Biden handled COVID very well when he got in. Yeah. And got vaccines to people and did an amazing job, which brings me to the, the Trump interview with Carlson, where uh, both of them were basically saying that Biden has completely lost it and is uh, senile. And this is like a Fox News kind of thing. I don't watch Fox. Do you watch, do you guys sample Fox enough to see an occasional clip of uh, Biden falling down? <laughs> 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 you just got to watch enough of it. Yeah, but uh, I mean, believe me, uh, the other networks like run plenty of Biden. I mean, you know, the one visual of him falling down. Now, you know, I don't watch right. Trump the sandbag. Well, Trump, Trump said yesterday about Crooked Joe, uh, <laughs> corrupt Biden, that uh, he's even worse mentally than he is physically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then and Tucker said uh, Kamala Harris also is senile. Oh, (laughs) that's a take I have not read. So if you wanted to hear a string of, uh, uh, you know, 46 minutes of unbelievable lying. Mm. Yeah, that was an amazing 46 minutes. So you guys should uh, go back and look at that. I mean, it is the thing that Tucker, I mean, I watched Jesse Waters last night, so I did watch an hour of Fox News before the debate. He's really good, by the way. I I'm mean, kidding, he's not. <laughs> I was trying to I know he, who prepare he, myself emotionally. He's yeah. Tucker's to fight with replacement, you, right? Tucker's yes. Replacement, yeah. 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 I mean, I always liked him because he was so stupid and I felt that, you know, with Tucker, he's smart. So you think, you know, his intellect makes what he's doing more powerful. But with Jesse Waters, he did say some things that were shockingly on. You know, he said Hunter Biden funded an international sex trafficking ring. Hmm. That was a throwaway line. I mean, I was like, where's the, you know? So, I mean, there is a fair amount of uh, crazy stuff being disseminated from Fox too. still. Oh, all the time. I mean, it's just, it's painful. I mean, I, you know, I, you know, there are people who like, I, I, I watch Fox because I want to see what the other side is thinking. I can't do that. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, there were some other people on the stage. Um, I guess it was predictable if you added up who got the most minutes. It was uh, Ramaswamy, probably the most, right? No, it wasn't. Who no. was who was I, the most? What, I I looked this up on the New York Times. I thought for sure it would be Ramaswamy, and in fact, and I was shocked. The most speaking time was Pence with twelve yeah. minutes and thirty seven seconds. Then Ramaswamy, eleven forty seven. Then Christie, and the least was our Asa, friend. Or- yes, Asa. <laughs> Only <laughs> and Doug, and they spent the most time talking about abortion. I liked Asa, by the way. I thought he was. I mean, you know, he's not good on a prayer, but uh, he, he did strike me as like a grown up. 
Yeah, uh, Trump had something to say that he's a nasty person. He's always been nasty. <laughs> and Asa is, I, I know, I've i met I him a number it. of times. He's one of the sweetest yeah, people in the world. Sweet. But right. yeah, I, uh, Trump, anybody who uh, has turned on him is sick. Right. <laughs> is a sick, nasty person mm-hmm. and always has yeah. been. Oh, oh, you know what I wanted to play? Uh, somehow, uh, Peter, you got this. And this is like a 45 second clip, but it just gives you some taste of uh, Trump. And I, I picked it up because it's so crazy. And it's about uh, Comey, about firing Comey. And evidently, according, he had to fire Comey because there was some plot to install Hillary if uh, he didn't fire Comey. There's a real question about firing him anyway. You understand, because, you know, when they have a 10 year term, there is a question. Uh, I fired Comey. That was a great thing. If I didn't fire Comey, maybe I wouldn't be talking to you or I'd be talking to you about real estate or something else other than politics. Right. Uh, that, that was a coup, in my opinion. That was a very sick deal. That was the insurance policy. You remember the insurance policy? Oh, she's going to win, darling. She's going to win. But uh, just in case she doesn't, we have an insurance policy. An insurance policy she was what they were doing. <laughs> and we caught them with that. That was a very important tweet or whatever it was, text. It was a big deal. That was a big deal. The insurance policy. She's going to win 100 million to one. Now, that's not good odds. At least they gave me one, right? 100 uh. million to one. <laughs> You know, was, <laughs> but it was that way, every second of it was like that. <laughs> you know, I mean, I was listening to that. He makes a lot of sense. It was an insurance policy. Well, well, maybe we're the sick ones. <laughs> <laughs> Come um, back to Earth One. Right, 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 Come right. back. Yeah. 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 It's incredible that these guys, these two have really spun themselves up. And James Comey is the worst person in the world. I mean, oh, I hate Comey, and yeah. because and I yelled he's not at the him. worst person in the world. Well, he's not the worst okay. person in the world. Top They're not the worst. Twenty. Well, no. he he cost uh, he Hillary did, the election. He, he did not. Yeah, I. I, I but he then. But then, yes, he cost the election, the and very person. annoying. I will, I will too. So those two things. <laughs> but yeah. you if you cost but, Democrats yeah, the annoying. election, you elect Donald Trump and then you're also quite annoying. That has to be worth something. Uh, you got a great book deal. <laughs> no, that was part of the annoying part. <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah, so and then, yes. then the book. Yeah, yeah it was also very annoying. annoying. I did. I didn't read the book. But Tell us your James Comey story. Al. I yelled at him in the skiff. The, we, we got a briefing. I don't know why in the secure room soon after Trump had won. And he gave us Democrats for some reason, a briefing in the skiff. And I yelled at him. Why did you do that? And he said, uh, you know, I had to, I, it was an impossible choice and I had to do what I did. And I go, well, it was against FBI policy to do it. And, <laughs> and, and I just got furious at him. And yeah, it, 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 it was moral vanity is what it was. Cause he felt like she was going to win. And then this way he'd look good. I think, yeah. wasn't that what yeah. it was? That's pretty much what it was. And yeah. he'd look bad if he didn't. And maybe there were some FBI guys who were forcing him on his case to do it. But that that was it. We wouldn't be talking about any of this shit right now if he hadn't done that. So we actually might be, though. That's the thing. Why? But still, whatever. Why? It's all hindsight. I don't know. I mean, Hillary, were, I, I don't know. There, there is a, the, the spiral would have gone on, I think, in, in some form. And I, I think there would be plenty of sickness everywhere for us to discuss. Right. Mm, boy. Maybe, maybe not like that. I mean, I, my question with Comey is um, what was the sort of goal? I mean, I get, I get it, but it just wasn't policy. It wasn't even policy anyway. I don't, it doesn't matter now. Well, let's, but. let's, let's, he wasn't in the debate last night. Right. There was also, uh, for some reason, it started out, oh, yeah, uh, Tucker. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm talking about something you guys didn't watch, but but uh, Tucker kept saying, uh, aren't, aren't you afraid someone's going to kill you? <laughs> <laughs> so he literally meant kill. He, he like said, are you, do you fear for your life or something? Yes. Like that? Amazing. Yes. 
And then it was like, why wouldn't they? And Lord Jesus. No, no, this was the tenor of, of, of that. A lot of that Fox stuff, I mean, just from the Jesse Waters stuff where you have a guy who just is not so smart is really dark. I mean, when you look at the Tucker interview, he asks, like, do you think there's going to be civil war? I mean, the stuff is so dark that this Republican propaganda machine creates. I mean, it really is sort of a dystopian parallel universe well well, here here's one of the things that i kind of seized on in the debate last night when there there was a moment where uh i guess pence kind of gave him an opening he said something to the effect of morning in america or or shining city on a hill whatever the reagan oh yeah thing was ramaswamy kind of corrected him i i think this happened contiguously but he he almost said he he said look this is not morning in america these are dark times something to that effect (laughs) right direct quote but you know to me you know ramaswamy who was actually seen as kind of a an optimistic entrepreneur energetic next generation kind of thing would himself you know lean into darkness which is exactly what trump did i mean trump is you know the least optimistic the most nihilistic yeah. Public figure we've ever seen pretty much. And, you know, remember his inauguration speech, the American Carnage speech. So, you know, to me, that was him staking his claim, not so much to the optimistic Trump mantle, but to the uh, extremely pessimistic, dark Trump right. America kind of next generation. You know, and then here you have Trump following that up or trumping this with the ultimate dark visual, in, you know, when he's being booked in a real uh, sounds like a real unpleasant prison down in Georgia. So, yeah, uh, which is going to win the week. I mean, as far as like the visual that everyone takes away, I mean, never mind like the debate. I mean, that's what I mean, on Friday morning, that's he's going to be everywhere. I mean, that picture is going to be everywhere. You saw that he's surrendering during prime time. Oh, yeah. To absolutely. make the most of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's and he, here's the thing. You know, he's got to be worried, though, in, in that for someone so vain, you have to realize that whoever is taking those mug shots down in Georgia <laughs> is not in the map. I mean, these are really bad, unflattering mug shots. I mean, this is these are not carry lake light shadowing <laughs> mug shots. I mean, look at some of these guys. I right? like the yeah. choices people make, though. Uh, <laughs> like Gen- Jenna well, Ellis. Jenna Ellis's choice yeah. was prom uh, prom picture. Yeah. yeah. Giuliani seemed to be angry for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, I was the, to... was a John Eastman. Oh, Eastman and like the, and the guy, uh, what's the guy? The lawyer, a uh, cheesebro. Yeah. Cheesebro. Yeah. It, He's it, my favorite. But yeah. you have I mean, to make a choice. And I, what do you think uh, Trump's choice is going to be? Angry? A little great. angry? Dignified? Oh. Angry? What? what? They're going to be using that for mugs and sweaters. And I mean, here's what I was. Here's what I'm hoping for. They go, uh, Mr. President, uh, on take this on three. One, two, fan, fan, big fan, three, bam. And that's what I'm hoping for. But I I got to get that down to them before (laughs) prime time. (laughs) <laughs> this is a real conspiracy. But, he, but you see, they're doing something just as bad because there is like this really, really harsh overhead light they use. And <laughs> um, which they don't have to. But, you know, that's going to be really unflattering to Trump. And they also have that little um, logo for like the county jail or whatever the, uh, the oh, jurisdiction yeah. is up at the top. You that's can't, and so that's like branded to the photo in ways that other mugshots are not. Right. So, I mean, I, I've sort of thought about this. And I know Trump has thought about this because, you know, he's he is planning this out. Well, you think know. about your mugshot, I guess. I mean, you must. Right? Yeah, sure. What am I going to do for my mugshot? Well, well, there is. I mean, there's a defiant mugshot kind of move that you can make. Right. I remember Tom Delay's <laughs> mugshot. Right. <laughs> and, 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 you know, you could say Janet Ellis kind of did that. I mean, the, there's this, there's a long history of politicians and mugshots. Mm-hmm. You know, I was thinking of Bl- Blavojevich. Blavojevich. Yeah, that's right. What was up with him? Did he like change his part or something? <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at some so He did something. He, what was he? What did he do again? He was a. Uh, I think he smiled. He was definitely a. Sm- yeah, he was a smiler. He was a smiler. I mean, there, there have been, you know, if you sort of look on. Um, 
was like on the internet. So it has to be true. There are a lot of these kind of age, aging, you know, you sort of do these uh, computer simula simulations of what this person will look like once they are aged and once they, you know, once they're not in makeup and once they've been in jail for a while. <laughs> and uh, Adam Kinzinger um, yeah. actually tweeted and it's got to be, that's on his Twitter feed somewhere or X feed, whatever it's called, uh, a picture of, you know, Trump, a Trump in prison mugshot, actually orange jumpsuit mugshot. His hair completely white because, uh, you know, he'll be denied. And and and, and yeah. being while being sworn in. So, <laughs> so that, that's that's that, right. That's yeah. what I just want to uh, just go to right now is uh, this, this what last night's debate makes no difference. Right. It's Trump. Uh, um, he's a nominee. Right. And he's <sighs> sure looks like it. I mean, I, I think so. It's uh, I mean, I don't. You know, I've been wrong about this. I thought that once he got like several indictments that he'd start going down. Is that possible? Is it possible that he first trial, of course, will be the January 6th trial and it may happen sooner rather than later and he may get convicted? Will that make any difference? So the only thing I would say is just that we're still six months out. You know, right now, having two state indictments, two federal indictments and a superseding indictment has delighted the base. But you could see a world where there's a come. I mean, I don't think it's likely, but I think there's maybe a 20 percent chance that the elites wrangle the base back to being like, I mean, you'd heard Nikki Haley last night, right? Like this guy is not growing the electorate. So, I mean, I think there's a 15 percent chance that somebody has some moment of sanity yeah i mean and the other the other indicator is that i mean not everyone was booing i mean there were there were fairly you know, there were there were audible pockets of applause and supportiveness when you know haley especially but also christie were were doing their kind of counterpoint thing so uh, you know again these are these are significant numbers when you're talking about a fairly small uh, unrepresentative slice of the electorate. Okay, well let's uh, let's leave it there. I just uh, hope that he's not the nominee, mm -hmm. and I just hope that if he is the nominee, that he loses. And let me tell you why. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so let's end it there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I, I hope you enjoyed uh, listening. That beautiful music is by Leo Kotke, the great Leo Kotke. I want to thank Peter Ogburn for producing this podcast. We'll talk again next week. Mm -hmm.